spend all our time in the dressing room. We spend three hours before the gig in the dressing room and just doing exactly this. We listen to music. We uh, get ourselves in the right frame of mind to do a gig. We played 2002, 2004, 2005, 2007, no, we did 2006, 2006, 2006 yeah. 2008, um, 2010, 2012, 2015. It's that eighth time, eighth time, and we, this is our third time on the main stage. We were actually the first band to ever go through all three stages in a row. We were the first band to do that. But we actually did it through four stages, like Ross said, because we played the Comedy Tent in 2002, so... Um, but yeah, it was always a dream, a childhood dream, to play the main stage at Reading and Leeds. So it's, it's kind of wild that we're doing it for the third time this year, you know? It's, uh, we always have like, really bad dreams that we're running up to. Doing the main stage at Reading and Leeds, every year without fail, we always have like these... Stress like, dreams. Really bad, yeah, stress, like... Just nightmares where you know you're doing the gig and like no one's there or everyone's leaving and everything's just going terribly wrong. So one, one way or another, I don't think it can ever go as bad as what I dream of. You know, we're on at 3:45 today, so when it got to 12:45 in the afternoon, that's when we weren't allowed to eat after that, and that's when we became sequestered in this small part of the room, um, <laughs> drinking and listening to music. I don't trust anybody with my drums. Yeah, I've got this thing about. When they're set up, I, I have to go look at them and like listen to them myself, and, and I can I can probably move them to, like you know five mil to the left, and then I'll move them five mil to the right, and just do some daft some drummer stuff. We're well, listening right. to some Portland prog music right now. It's a record I just produced called Blessed Chest. A lot like, of the time, it's eighties power ballads. Right, it honestly is all like just eighties pop no, stuff like that. Very out. stirring. We start thing. out with just like. Anything, like anything that takes you win. And then the closer we get to gig time, the more dramatic it gets. So you start to get you know, a lot of 80s power pop and the power ballads that really like stir the emotions. It's very the coolest slot to do because it's like you know you feel like a responsibility to really get the crowd on side because we have to wake people up yeah, you have you to know? Like so that they have a good great. festival for the rest of the weekend you know what i mean because you need people to i i i know from being in the crowd at leeds festival and reading festival that there's always like one band that waits a crowd up and after that everyone's like gets really into the festival prior to that it's like it prior to that it's like one o'clock or two o'clock yeah. on a friday afternoon and like you know people are generally at one o'clock or two o'clock on a Friday afternoon and not exactly in that kind of headspace and so I feel like it, we had you, that you have to slot. take it by the scruff of the neck. Anyway, this is the first day of the Leeds Festival so I think it is our, unfortunately it's been left to us and it is our duty to make sure that we have a mosh pit today. We like encourage people to have a mosh pit and the reason why is because I'm like, when I used to go to Reading, that was what I was waiting for. I was always waiting for that opportunity, that one band that came on cut stage loose. and actually wanted the crowd to do stuff like that. So I feel like, you know, we, we got that going, so mission accomplished. And I feel like, you know, maybe we're like the band that really started the weekend off for a lot of people. It's been like almost a hometown show. We're not going to go out there and accept that like, 
you know, because it's the first day that it's going to be like a fairly, you know... Slightly more mellow. Yeah, slightly more mellow thing. We're like, look, we used to come to this festival as kids. We know that on the first day it takes one band to break the seal. We want to be that band, you know. And we were that band today, and that's absolutely, like, you it's know... Cool really it's, cool, it's cool for us, and it's cool for everyone yeah. else, too, because... Yeah, you need... All, you know, all you, the bands you, you who are on after it. us are going to feel the benefit of that, too, I think. Yeah. Because it was a hometown festival, Ross was hitting his snare drum extra hard and it just it, yeah. it, it got it couldn't it couldn't stand up to it yeah but it's like you know that's just the nature of playing festivals and it's not like it's just a case of figuring out what to do and how to deal with it and like we've done enough festivals for it not to be a problem you know so if we, if we come off stage and it's like you know rather than coming off stage and that being a bad thing we come off stage and like oh there's the snare drum got broken and the, the bass guitar got broken and the guitar got broken. Instead of coming off and lamenting that, we come off and celebrate that like, wow, well, that means, that means that, you know, we, we, we work really paper. hard and we put in a good performance at 45 minutes. If the gear can't fully stand up to it, that means that the force of the band was appropriate for the scale yeah. of the event. As a band, we always say leads and readiness like a lot more seriously than any other festival because they were the ones that we used to go to as a kid. And coming to Leeds already and having a bad gig is not an option. It's not an option. It's like, this is where we like, you save up all your reserves for these two shows. It's like, I feel the, like- The biggest part of the year for these, us. Yeah, we, it's the biggest part of the year. It's the, 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 the two gigs that we like, fret about the most, or like think about the most, or dream about the most. And like, you make, as a result, you make sure that you put everything into these two shows. As far as Leeds goes, I feel like we have left everything on that stage. Everything that we could leave on that stage, we have done. And so we've just got to do the same in Reading now. So by the time we got off stage, I was pretty hungry. We did press first for a while and then had some catering at the festival. And then by, the, by that point, it was uh, basically time for the headliners. So we went to go... Libertines are given us stage access, like the closest stage usually, but, you know, we're old friends, so the letters... Uh, up on the stage, so we watched them and then just hung out with them in the dressing room compound for a little while. Yeah, I actually feel reminisce yeah, because of all that. I actually feel a little bit ropier than usual today, so I'm glad there was a day off because we, we all got up really late. It was a long day yesterday, yeah. It was like you know, we were on site early and we were probably like the last people to leave as well, so um. We'll see it's going to help travelling down to Reading the day before rather than doing it all in one day. Well, we, we just like to do that, we just like to be you know. To be prepared, really. I, the, the one thing on gig days that I hate is I hate feeling rushed. That's the absolute worst. Over the career, like you know, our career, we've only had three vans, and like touch wood, we, none of them have ever really broken down. Like the first one was a police van. We toured in it for four, like three or four years, and then we sold it for pretty much the same amount that we bought it for. Then we bought another van, and Ross converted it. We toured out of that for another like four years. But the one we've Again, got now is really great. And bought the new one. The new, this is the best one that we've had so far. But it's like, it's allowed us to come, like to tar whenever we want and kind of on our own terms. You know, like you know. It's, well, just we independently. That's yeah. the main thing. Like we we just try to remain as independent as we can in that way because, uh, or in, in you know in, in as many ways as we can. But specifically on that way, just because it um, touring should be, you know. Um, a pretty liberating experience I think and like if you're on a bus like there's certain hours you've got to keep and you've got to leave at certain times. We were cut.
Ryan's dead shit ready, I guess. Time to get onto site. Up Ryan for a bit. Send them guys off to do some press. Most bands get endorsed by like rare bands or like fancy clothes or whatever, but us, sellouts. Yeah, we 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 got some kind of shortbread endorsement, yeah. and there's just loads of shortbread in the we back have, of the We have a biscuit endorsement because yeah. uh, one of our tech's girlfriend she like works in like the you know the biscuit industry. We get a lot of like experimental new you know designs and stuff that haven't hit the market yet. Back when we used to go to festivals in the early 90s or the mid 90s, it was like you went there to drop out of society, you, you went there to fly under the radar, to not be seen. So you were living in this countercultural zone. Whereas now it seems like because of the social media presence, people go there to be seen. So everybody wants to look, um, everyone wants to look festival chic. How many bands do you know? Spots. How many bands do you know get a giant gobstopper every day? Like, yeah. like Ryan always puts gobstoppers on the rider, and I always put Kinder eggs on the rider. But um, you know, I mean, surely that that's like a full day's worth of dedicated eating to eat two of these. I mean, they're bigger than a. I don't know. He does it. He eats gobstoppers. Big one for us, you know. Yeah. So this is the place to end it, basically. So we've also like we haven't really toured this new record yet in the UK because we've been bit, like busy doing festivals everywhere. So um, you know, like, it'll be it'll be nice to like round things off today and then and then like you know and then we go away and we, we're going to the US for like a month and then when we get back and we finally get to come over and like you know play more of the new record live. So rather being restricted to like you know 50 minute sets or whatever. We can like you know, play lots well, of new records. Keep putting stuff. songs out, you know, like when you've got six albums, you just don't really know what you're gonna play. And so, it'd be nice to yeah get back to our own stuff. Hey, Sean. Yeah, I'm gonna sit this one out because sometimes with us all being brothers, we always end up like finishing off each other's sentences, and and usually I I'll, I'll be just sat in on an interview, and if you could hear my mic, I'm just like making noises like that. That, that because I'm like trying to get a word in so I just thought I might as well just sit this one out you know like um, let them guys do all the talking <coughs>
show was good. I'm really incredibly exhausted. I uh, preferred it to Leeds personally. Well, I preferred Red and I preferred Leeds. Mm. I'm indifferent. So. Yeah. We lost my guitar today though, but it was on its last legs. So. Hopefully someone's burning that on the campsite right now. That's Somebody got thought. a souvenir. I just feel tired. I feel like I need some big boy sweeties. Mm -hmm. And then next we're gonna go, we've got a US tour and a UK tour in October. Um, you know, so still pretty busy, but. Busy yeah. till the end of the year. Yeah. Um, we've got 10 days off or something and then we can start a US But the UK tour. tour's the next big thing over here, starting in October. Well, look, we got given these big Bob stoppers on the rider, so well, this will keep us occupied on the journey home, I think. It's the fact that it's our last uh, UK show until, until we do the headline tour, so... Um, we, le we left it all on the stage, you know, I think. And that's important. When you've done the gig and the van's loaded, and you get in the van and you set off home, and then obviously the journey gets boring really quick, but you still have that moment where it's like, oh yeah, job done.